Hi, this is Bart Santello, and I'll be discussing in this post the roof structure for the southeast room of the Cobb Studio. Um, I'm starting here with the two 12-inch um, diameter ponderosa pine beams. Um, right now, in the photo, they're shown on top of the concrete bond beam, and which was discussed in earlier posts, and you can go back and read about that. Um, uh, here you can see a close-up of end of one beam, uh, secured with metal straps that were anchored in the concrete. Uh, the screws seen at the end help uh, hold the straw clay, the cob mix um, used in the walls. Uh, it helps it attach to the uh, beam end. Uh, the southeast room is relatively small, approximately 8 by 10. That room is one of four roof lines that will make up the studio. Because I work primarily alone, I purposely designed the building so I could break down large projects, like the roof, into smaller manageable tasks. Next, to create the ceiling, I went to my uh, bamboo pole pile, uh, bamboo poles that I purchased, and uh, set up a rig to quickly be able to cut the pieces to the right length. And on the rig were markings, uh, where, uh, indicating where two holes had to be drilled. So when I would put, eventually put screws to secure the uh, poles to the beam, I wouldn't split the bamboo. If I screwed directly in, uh, I could possibly split the bamboo. Then the poles were laid on a plastic sheet and sprayed with an insecticide to eliminate any powder post beetles that may have been infesting the bamboo. By boring holes, the powder post beetles eventually could weaken the structural integrity of the poles and compromise the entire roof structure. The sprayed poles were then wrapped in, a, in the plastic shown in the photo overnight. The next day, the poles were taken out and cleaned again, and after drying in the sun, a wood preservation oil was applied, which helped bring out the texture and beauty of the bamboo. The next slide shows the bamboo poles laid perpendicular to the main support beams and are attached using four inch exterior deck screws and one and one half inch diameter washers sized to spread the clamping load on a larger area of the bamboo than just the small head of the screw which would probably break and crack the bamboo. Note that I set each bamboo pole so the crown is up so as the weight is applied on the roof the bamboo will tend to distribute any load out along the pole over to the walls on either side of the support structure. Uh, here's a view from the ground inside the room looking up at the bamboo ceiling. I went over to the local coffee house and asked for empty burlap coffee bags, laid them out on top of the roof, and staple gun them to the poles. What this accomplishes, when you look up from the inside at the ceiling, it provides a visual aesthetic because the poles are not perfectly straight and thus gaps between the horizontally stacked poles invariably occur. So what you see between any gaps is a visually pleasing burlap texture. Note, um, I don't recommend purchasing burlap at home improvement stores. The burlap is imported from South Asia somewhere and is treated with a nasty smelling chemical, probably a combination of like an asphalt emulsion and insecticide, try to keep bugs and stuff. Uh, it's probably an import law, so stay away from that. Next is a two inch thick rigid foam insulation layer. This helps uh, provide an inexpensive and lightweight thermal insulation layer for the roof. The foam uh, was secured to the bamboo poles using deck screws and the same large flat washer. A vapor barrier of six mil plastic sheathing was then installed over the rigid foam. In this photo, cob was applied to the roof in about one to two inches thick. Note that this mix of cob was different than what I used on the walls. The walls have much more clay than straw, whereas on the roof, I'm trying to keep it light, so I applied mostly cob with, a, with enough clay to bind everything together. So once the water evaporates out, it's pretty lightweight, but provides good insulation. Note, at the top center of the, of the uh, photo, I installed a six inch diameter concrete pipe to drain water from the roof. This type of flat roof drain is known as a canale. And you'll see it later uh, in a slide. At this point, 
I began building up the wall above the roof line. This is called the parapet wall. The parapet wall could be any size in height, but I made it less than two feet to save time and effort from having to haul extra hundreds of pounds of adobe up the scaffolding for no additional value once the wall was high enough to create like a bathtub effect. Once I finished the parapet wall, I made sure it was level and then let everything dry out for about a week. The next critical step in the process was deciding what to do with the top of the parapet wall. In my last adobe building, I simply lime plastered the top of the wall and left it at that. But over time, the thermal cycles from day to night caused the plaster to crack and separate. Therefore, it became a maintenance issue. What I decided to do this time was pour a two inch thick concrete top cap using flexible masonite as the form like I did when pouring the bond beam. And you can uh, read about that in previous posts. In the photo, you see the forms being installed. Notice the one half inch thick rigid foam strips placed. I placed on both the inside and the outside of the parapet wall. What this does is assist in creating a lip that extends the top cap one half inch on both sides of the wall. So the parapet wall will now serve two important purposes. One, provide strong non-maintenance top cap Secondly, act as flashing for the eventual roll roof that we'll, you'll see in later photos. After the top cap forms were fabricated, every three feet I pounded two one half inch diameter, 10 inch long pieces of rebar into the parapet wall. They stick out about, they stick up about one and three quarters inch, inches from the parapet wall. These pieces of rebar will act as anchoring rods for the top cap, preventing any horizontal movement. This photo shows a section of the top cap poured and completed. Concrete, concrete color was added to provide an earthen shade to the normally gray concrete. The next two photos show the finished top cap providing a nice linear finish here at the east side of the building. The roof drain is clearly visible in the photo. Back to the top of the roof, a better view of the overall top cap is visible. In addition, a second layer of cob was added to the roof. Although it cannot be discerned in the photo, the second layer provides for the pitch of the roof in order to drain the water properly out through the pipe. The pitch was established using a surveyor's level and the stakes were placed in the roof at certain intervals. The height of each was established with the surveyor's level to allow for correct pitch to the drain. Uh, these slides show a liquid rubber coating applied over the top of the asphalt rolled roofing. The liquid rubber is called by its trade name Blue Max by Ames Research and this product creates an impermeable barrier on, on top of the rolled roofing. Note that the biggest challenge when you build up an earthen roof is how to make the transition from essentially a, an adobe mud base to some type of long-term waterproof material such as the rolled roofing or foam or whatever you're going to apply. There are different roofing methods such as foaming like I said, membranes and even cement if your beams are designed to support that type of load. But since the roof was small I kept it simple and inexpensive and went with the asphalt rolled roofing that I could adhere in the cob roof with the same screws and wide washers I've been using. Since Bluemax liquid rubber is not UV stabilized, a white top coat elastomeric by Ames Research called Maxi Stretch was applied. Maxi Stretch is non toxic, environmentally friendly, and reflects 98% of sunlight, which helps keep the roof cool. This photo shows the drain and the top cap there at the southeast corner. This final slide shows an overview of the completed roof. Reflecting on this method, I still have mixed feelings. Securing the asphalt rolled roofing to the adobe roof with screws could result over time in those same screws backing out and creating a leak path. Note that cob is excellent for adhering screws and um, that's how I'm able to pour the concrete bond beams because I'm able to put screws in those 
um, supporting uh, forms and it holds the concrete very well. It's very strong. The other problem I had was uh, trying to install rolled roofing on the curved parapet wall created folds that needed to be cut and lapped over each other creating potential leak paths along these seam lines. Although the rubber blue max and elastomeric coatings addresses all these potential leak paths, the patchwork nature of the installed rolled roofing suggests a better method will need to be tried on the other roofs in the near future. I feel confident that with a maintenance coat of elastomeric every few years, this roof will hold up well against the elements. Thank you for listening to this, and if you have any questions, you can email me, Bart Santello, at info at deserthomestead.com. Thank you.